Okay, today we're talking about Tonight. amateur radio freak frequencies, bands, band plans, what all the bands do, and to, of course, I've got my my uh, loyal sidekick, Tio. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Good, 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 good. Just been noticing in the chat a few people have been talking about propagation and various bands, and six meters seems to be the one that's uh, going off at the moment over there. You just tried to have a bit of a listen and see if you could uh, get on the air, but you're having some trouble. Yeah, I'm listening now, and it, and my trouble is is that I'm running the ICOM seventy one hundred, and I I admit I don't know how to do this on six meters on this radio because this is the first time I've tuned to six meters in forever. And it won't let me transmit below 50.500 or 50.600. I don't know. Might need to uh, have a look at that. I don't think that that's a limitation on anything, but, well, not not a, it shouldn't be a radio limitation. It shouldn't be a radio limitation, but it is. But, yeah, you're having that problem. While uh, while you uh, tried to try to get working on six meters, I thought that while we would do a bit of a rundown of all of the uh, the bands, the amateur radio bands, the frequencies, what you can do on them, and uh, give a bit of an overview for beginners, because I received a question earlier on in the week, which was, "I'm a beginner and I don't know what band to use. I don't know what antenna to put up. What can I expect?" So that's where sort of this has come from, and I want to thank also in the chat. I uh, I put I pinned a comment to the ARRL band plan, um, and Forty Five Auto said that he's a fan of the Icon band plan. And uh, just having a look at that, that is a good shout because we just brought that up, and uh, it's now pinned in the chat. It actually funny is a lot. you should mention that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot easier. So this segment is not sponsored by Icon, but if Icon are watching and they would like to sponsor this in the future, then by all means they can go ahead and do that because we'll be giving I, them some free advertising with the band plan. So there you go. I think Icon needs to sponsor you. I think you're a stand-up guy in the amateur radio community and you could only help help Icon with their uh, with their future sales, right? Help <clears> fill <throat> in the blank. Help dot dot yeah. dot. Yeah. Uh, interesting though is, and I'll we'll flash this up and we'll go through every band shortly. But they they start with the VHF and UHF bands and down, but they start at twenty three centimeters. So we might need to uh, re reverse that and flip that. And of course, there's higher bands than twenty three centimeters. So we'll uh, we'll we'll go back to that shortly. Um, just quickly to those uh, who are watching, uh, thank you to uh, saw that we've got a couple of. Patreons and YouTube members. I can see that Todd's in there and uh, I was going to say T.O.'s in there, but you're with me. Um, Andy's there. I'm in here too. So uh, thank you guys. I, I hope I didn't miss anyone there. So thank you for joining. If you'd like to become a YouTube member or a patron, then there is a link in the description. Oh, I miss Sandy. Uh, I'll fart on a BMX. Hello. Good to, uh, good to see you. I met him the other day at our uh, radio open day. So that was excellent to... Uh, to be able to see him. So thank you um, to the members and the patrons who are watching. If you'd like to become a member or patron, there's a link below. You can also gift memberships. Did you know that, Tio? That you can gift a membership? I have seen it. I haven't seen how to do it. No. I, uh, I, I am the same. So uh, you can also, if you've got a friend in the chat who's desperate to become a member, you can, uh, you can gift them a chat as well. So there you go. All right. Let's start off with uh, the lowest bands. And here we go. This is the this is the ARRL chart, which shows some of the uh, frequency allocations. We've also got the Australian chart there too for those who are watching. I haven't brought up the UK one, but uh, I'm sure that you can follow along with the with the band plans there. And they're they're all relatively similar, aren't they, Steve? So. Um, yeah, they're very, you, you, well, you say they're similar and they are relatively similar. However, there's some really interesting stuff. If you're trying to work DX from, I don't even know the specific country, but let's say from US to Norway, Norway's band plan doesn't 100% overlap the US general mm -hmm. portion of the band plan. So you might be calling a frequency trying to reach a DX station and they're not allowed to respond to you. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to work DX specifically, then be aware that the people that you're trying to hear from need to be able to talk to you. It needs to be legal in their country to talk back to you. Mm. Well, notice um, on our band plans, which 
I think is also in yours uh, in some of the – yeah, here we go. So 80 meters, there's a thing called DX window here. So that's basically this window of frequencies which is, you know, sort of semi-allocated to um, amateurs across the globe. There are some, as you said, there are some inconsistencies. So say this 3.790 and just using 80 metres as a quick example, the 3.8. If we go back to our band plan and scroll down to 80 metres, you can see there that 3776 to 3800 is for advanced licensees only. So you're only going to be able to work um, an advanced licensee in Australia, which limits your pool for DX, which um is is that dx window there and it's similar on uh 20 meters so if we scroll down to 20 20 meters uh advanced and standard licensees basically get the entire band but in the us you guys have uh 20 you've got the extra advanced and general portion is above 14 150 right so anything right. below 14 150 you're only going to be able to work um uh the the uh, you're going to be limited in who you can work so um uh and and there's these portions so you can see there so there's a slice of spectrum that extras get over advance and and then again generals above 14225 so um so that's i guess one thing to just keep in mind when we're going through this but Looking at the lowest bands, I don't have a lot of experience with these lower bands, but these are the LF bands which we do have access to, which is 2,200 metres, 135 kilohertz. That is a, a very low band requiring a very big antenna. I know some people... I was going to say, can you imagine how big the antenna is you would need for that? The antenna is is absolutely massive. Um, although, I, just, I just use a loop antenna and it takes up <clears throat> yeah. three stories of my house, all three stories of my house, one antenna. <laughs> yeah, well, that's ac that's actually true. So, I'd, so one of the hams in our um, in our group, he runs on. I think he's not on twenty two hundred. I think he's on six thirty meters, four seventy two kilohertz, and he uses like a loop antenna. Um, and he's experimented with some other antennas as well. So, um, but f like the the if you have a look here too, it uh, one thing that band plans also show is they show how wide the band is. So on twenty two hundred megahertz, let me zoom this in a little bit. It's 135.7 kilohertz to 137.8 kilohertz. It's like it's only three kilohertz wide. So, and that's, they basically jam everything <laughs> in there. Ritty, data, phone, everything in that three Do it kilohertz. All. So, well, three so. kilohertz, that's your, that's your allowable single sideband transmission, right? Yep. So, so one, 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 one conversation at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 630 meters is uh, is also very similar as well uh, and also keep in wider. mind keep in mind your dipole needs to be a half wavelength above the ground as well as being <clears> a half <throat> wavelength long a, a dipole a kilometer above the uh, <laughs> above the ground that's a half <laughs> right. wavelength you could probably right. uh, string you could probably string a dipole between two mountain peaks with a with a valley in between um, fly it over now with a drone or something like that now you're cheating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's power limits as well. Um, same two. We've got uh, that. We've got that. Those bands. Let me scroll back up. We got those bands, and uh, you can see here ours is a little bit more uh, more detailed. It breaks it down into all of the uh, all of the the modes and whether they're most likely going to be. Of course, band plans are sort of um, band plans are sort of to make everything. Uh, structured and work well um, so that you don't go transmitting, you know, single sideband up in the or down in the CW portion or something like that, which sometimes you do yeah. here. Um, Some people and, need rules. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, just seeing here if these uh, if these if the band plans on the lower lower bands for ICOM, so the the ICOM. Uh, Band plan here has got the, the the same stuff, same power levels. This is quite a nice one to print out and put on your shack wall if you want to uh, have a quick reference to it. You can do the same with the ARRL one. This one just looks a little bit. Uh, I think you can neater. order those too. I've seen them, you? you know, pre-printed, you know, nice, nice big color, glossy yep. poster type deals. Yep. So as far as those bands are concerned, these low frequency bands, I think that they're more. Uh, 
the, the propagation on them, I'm I, again, I'm not really that familiar with them, but I think that they're more of a very short distance um, type of band. I know that they do run Whisper on these bands and they do get, you know, uh, quite long distances on Whisper. But uh, I think that you, you, a lot of those, uh, the propagation's, I think it's night time. Does that sound about right? Maybe. Um, well, I 160 is definitely D-layer. more active in the nighttime than it is in the daytime, yeah. Yeah, so, well, if we move on to 160, and I'm, I'm guessing that 2200 and 630 metres, we need to get an expert on those two bands. But uh, the um, the 160 metre band, yeah, that suffers a lot in the daytime from D-layer absorption, so it works a lot better at, at night. Um, there's also... Uh, it's sort of a, 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 a short distance when it comes to, depending on antenna size too. Like as you said, you need large antennas to, to operate on these bands, but you can get away with a small magnetic loop or something like that. Um, uh, at night time, when it comes along though, 160 metres can open right up to worldwide sometimes the only thing that limits 160 meters a little bit is atmospheric noise it's a very very noisy band Um, you pick up a lot of stuff um, and also man-made noise too so um, i'm just trying to think of the antenna oh beverage antenna beverage antenna works well if you've got the space for Uh, listening for listening Um, people build magnetic loop antennas and you can see here that there's quite a decent chunk of spectrum. It's 200 kilohertz from 1.8 to 2 megahertz. So um, that's uh, that's not too bad. It's, so, um, so I like how they're going up. Decent. Like the, the 2200 meter band is one QSO. The 630 meter band is <laughs> two QSOs. The 160 meter band is lots of QSOs, but only at night. And then we finally get into 80 meters. 80 meters is huge. Mm, mm. And physically well, huge, not necessarily bandwidth huge. Well, yes. So, and and that's the thing. The bandwidth will, as you said, they don't. They're not consistent. They don't keep going up. Um, in HF, they get to a certain point where they are a limited spectrum, and then as we start to get into the higher VHF and UHF bands, that's when the bandwidth really do start to expand, and you can do some pretty cool stuff on them, um, and and experiment with some different modes. In, here down under, we have uh, a smaller one sixty meter band. So you've got what is it? You've got 200 kilohertz worth of spectrum up to two megahertz. Uh, we've only got, it looks like, I think it's yeah, 75 kilohertz. So we don't have a lot of, um, as much room, but we have. Yeah, we have so enough. if I tried calling you on 1980, you could hear me, but you couldn't respond. That's kind of what we were talking about yeah. earlier. Yep, because we don't have the permission to be able to transmit on those bands. The same too in Europe. Europe also has uh, a limitation Europe. on uh, Europe, 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 Europe. Europe. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, so, um, so I can't, uh, Aiden, can't that is that, SDR so. control. Good call. Um, I thought you were talking to me for a minute then. Uh, no, no, Aiden, not Hayden, oh, Aiden, 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 not Aiden, Aiden, Aiden. <laughs> Aiden not <laughs> Aiden. Uh, and so just having a look at the ICOM, um, band plan they've got avoid interference to radio rate rate raid e location radi location operations from 1.9 to 2 megahertz so um so yeah uh, there's there's you've got primary and secondary allocations where you don't want to interfere with other people that are on that on band. 160 that's what it says there oh i did not know is that in the other band plan nope no. is it here? it says have at it is it here? It's not here. So there you go. Plus one for ICOM over the other. Someone, someone will look that right. up in the chat. I'm sure. I'm, so, I'm sure, and they'll be able to. Uh, we'll be able to do that. KJ2MM says we give the ICOM plan to all new hams at our testing sessions. Excellent. Fantastic. The only thing, the only thing wrong, the new hams won't know anything above 23, 23 centimeters. ICOM, you need another page in here. That goes a little bit higher, especially with the 905 coming out. You're going to be operating a bit higher than 23 centimeters. Well, Ronnie wants to look to this. It's Ronnie. It's up in the chat. If you scroll up a bit. Yep, it's at the top of the. Uh, I'll just make sure. Yeah, I pinned it at the top of the chat, so it's there if you want to check it out. 
Uh, now we move on to uh, another band, which uh, is 80. This is probably one of the more popular bands for people to, to jump on. Um, so anywhere from 3.5 to 4 megahertz. Um, in the US we have uh, 3.5 to 3.8 with a slot in the middle here where nothing can operate between 3.7 and 3.776. So there you go. Um, we uh, we can't. Yeah, I know. I don't know what allocation that's for, but I'm pretty sure that it's important. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, 80 meters. 80 meters is a nighttime band. Again, during the day, you don't uh, really get the opportunity to work anyone unless they're really, really close. Uh, ground wave sort of thing. Uh, yeah, because real the close in. The, yeah, because the D layer absorbs everything, um, which. Um, dissipates at night, so that's where you can get um, long distance contacts. So for you, um, you could get to the other side of the island, right? During the day, not not quite. It's 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 a little bit too far. It probably, mm, I'm just trying to think. Eighty meters during the day. I think maybe the longest contact I've had is maybe fifty miles away. It's not really that yeah. far. So um, so yeah, I eighties. Uh, uh, I don't really use it in the day because I know that it's just it doesn't work very well. So um, I know when contesting, if you've ever seen my twenty-four hour contests before, um, I've done, uh, I've operated it during the day, and it's only been those who are around locally who I can I can work. So, so in the U.S. Uh, we have state QSO parties, and if you want to operate a state QSO party, it's really good to have an eighty meter dipole up in the air. Hmm. Because then you get those local communications for the like one or two counties away. Mm. The uh, the atmospheric noise on AU meters can also vary too, depending on your location. But it's not as bad as um, as one sixty meters. Um, if you want to build an effective antenna, you want something like a full wave dipole antenna. But you can also get away with compromised antennas on eighty meters, and it still works quite quite well. Uh, NV, NVIS, not near vertical incident Incidents skywave. Skywave propagation. It's one of my favorite acronyms in ham radio. We sound so yeah. awesome and powerful. NVIS. Near NVIS. vertical incident skywave propagation. Especially, dun, when, dun, dun. especially when, especially when you get on, and you go. I, I think you. I think I'm working you NVIS. There's so many acronyms, isn't there, uh, in in amateur radio? So if you want to get ahead, there is a glossary I know on the on the league's website which you can look up a lot of these terms. But uh, but NVIS on 80 meters is also um, depending on the antenna uh, possible. So your signal basically goes almost straight up and then straight down, and then you shorten your contacts, um, which might sound counterintuitive, but it depends on who you want to contact and how close they are. So, so to give you an idea, I was in Indiana and I had a 40 meter NFED half wave three feet off the ground and, and, and I made and, and, a contact and to, to and California. To be, and to be clear, you don't spend a lot of time in Indiana. So you made that contact quick, right? Well, it was I was doing a parks on the air <laughs> with a couple of other hams and I did one in Tennessee at the same at the same height and got a really good map. But you know, Indiana to California is pretty big for you know nevis's local communications it it is local it is more local it's more directed towards local people but don't be afraid to to be lazy and put your antenna three feet off the ground because it works well mm -hmm. um yeah that was a joke that you'll have to go back and watch uh one of our videos from hamvention to understand i guess an in-house joke about indiana oh oh you're talking about the gas station with the bulletproof glass <laughs> yes yes that that okay, one yeah you don't like yeah. spending a lot of time in AD. It's just straight no, in. Not, not at that gas station. No, it's it's no. so so just just because you're from overseas, and I'll, I'll give you this one. I was <laughs> Illinois is the one I like to drive through and not stop. But you ah, asked me to okay. pick you up in Illinois, so I had to stop there. Kevin, and you saw Kevin's why. Saying, but <laughs> Kevin saying Indiana isn't that bad. Okay, maybe. No, all right. Let's it's let's let's it's, say it's, it's Illinois, Illinois then. <laughs> we'll upset everyone in Illinois. Um. Dan also says, I saw this, since when is Australia an island? Since when was Australia not an island? Right. <laughs> we're, we're one big giant island, right? North America right. is one big giant island, aren't you? Or are you oh, connect no, no, you're no, connected. If, no, you're connected. If you, if you want to get really technical, this is my favorite part. The entire east coast of the United States is an island. People don't realize yeah. that. You uh, can, okay. you can yeah, sail... Yeah. 
up the St. Lawrence Seaway, through the Great Lakes, down the Mississippi River, across the Gulf of Mexico, and then up the Atlantic Ocean and do it all over again. There you go. Australia and and Tasmania and New Zealand are one. Uh, islands. There you go. And you can work them. Islands on the air. Although I don't know whether mainland Australia counts on islands on the air. I'd have to look that up. Right. But uh, it's probably a little bit too big. Uh, okay, back to what we were talking about. So, eighty meters is um, is a, a great a great band for beginners to get on because of the you know you it's pretty consistent at night time basically. So you'll be able to work and you'll be able to find someone on on eighty meters on certain frequencies. Um, the conversations on eighty meters may not lead themselves to something that you want to listen to, but sure, you can uh, you can, you can jump on 80 and uh, and have a bit of a listen around and tune around. So there you go. Depends on if you're a member of a certain type of demographic or not. Exactly. Um, so, uh, oh, so, so just having a look here. So there's some interesting stuff that you can then start to do on, on 80 meters and you could also do it on 160. We didn't cover that. You've also got some frequencies which are, Calling channels or specific channels for allocated for, for things. So here we go. We've got CW, QRP, meaning low power. You've got SSB, QRP. Um, and you've got SSTV and you can set... So slow scan television, you can send on these, you know, between this frequency range. You'll find them there. Um, you'll see beacons at certain frequencies. Um, AM, that's the AM calling frequency for 80 meters. So if you have a look and reference some of these frequencies on the band plans, then you should get a rough idea of where you'll find stuff, basically. Um, I notice here too, you've got 3570 to 3600. That's the RIDI and data section, but it actually doesn't tell you what the FT8 frequency is. But you can find that in the frequency of the software and that, that'll, that'll, uh, that'll switch you to, to the correct frequency, for instance. Um, 60 meters. Okay, 60 meters is an interesting one. We don't have access to 60 meters, but you guys do, and I think the uh, I think the UK and Europe do. So um, you've got specific channels, basically, right? On 60 meters, yeah, we do, and we are secondary users on that band, which means that you don't own it. Basically, <laughs> you need to. You need to be careful where you uh, where you operate, and it can be used for the primary purpose at any at any time, right? Yeah, and apparently, what happens is the primary user just uses enough power that it doesn't matter. You're limited to 100 watts, as it shows on the screen there. Um, and if they want to come blast by you with 50,000 watts, I guess you're going dark. <laughs> mm. Mm. Some people also they swear by 60 meters. They say that it's mm -hmm. a, a fantastic band because it starts to um, it's a little bit 80, it's a little bit better than 80 meters as far as atmospheric and man-made noise is concerned but then because of the um, I guess similarities in propagation between 80 and 40 meters which is the next band we'll go to you start to get some really interesting propagation happening at all sorts of you know times so um, well, a lot of soda people swear by sixty meters. It's a it's an easy band to set up. It's it's good. There's not a lot of busyness on it. Not business, but busyness. Mm. And then uh, my favorite thing is sixty meter FT8. I mean, there's like four people on sixty meter FT8, and they're all very grateful to make a contact with you. And then mm. you're done. <laughs> Game over. Yep. Yep. And it, yeah, as you say, it's a lot easier because of the the channel eyes and how much stuff and is on that band, and you need to limit yourself to. A small, uh, smaller bandwidth. <clears throat> okay, moving on, moving along. Eighty, uh, eighty meters, forty meters. We've got some bands to cover, and we've got so little time to cover them. Forty meters. Uh, so forty meters is uh, the next step up, and it, this is probably one of the most popular bands here. For as you mentioned, soda. Everyone seems to use forty meters for soda, even though the antenna is quite quite big. It's a very good daytime band. So um, 40 meters is you've got you've got a large chunk of spectrum on 40. You've got seven to 7.3. We are also seven to 7.3 as well. However, at night time, uh, we get we're on the secondary service as you mentioned. So at night time, uh, when 40 meters opens up, you start to get worldwide contacts. So when I mean worldwide. nighttime, 
nighttime where you are locally. As a, as a general rule of thumb, by the way, when it gets dark, uh, we get a lot of um, QRM from broadcast stations from 7, I think it's 7.2 uh, and above to 7.3. So this section of the band almost becomes unusable because of how many there are and how strong they are. So um, as I mentioned, 40 metres is, is pretty much during the day. It has a, a it, It's a pretty consistent band for you know, short distance contacts, which in our case is really good for soda because it's a specif specific distance to who we need to work. So um, there's always someone around, which is good. Um, and you don't get as much of that absorption during the day, the D layer absorption. And then at nighttime, it can be, yeah, worldwide worldwide contacts. And uh, I know that I usually hear, if, if there's any any anyone awake, I usually hear the US probably coming in at about maybe 7 or 8 p.m. local time here, which is really late for you. So right. um, lots of people, yeah, they love the they love the, the 40 meter band. Um, and I think uh, because of all of those reasons that 40 meters is probably the, the lowest band that you can have reliable DX. If you're going to sort of 80 meters or even... Um, uh, or you know, uh, yeah, about you know, sixty meters or lower, so sixty or eighty meters. It's very hard to work DX stations, but uh, but forty meters is a lot easier. Then we jump up, and this next band is interesting. Again, this is thirty meters, so this is the first work band, right? Yeah, we call them work bands over here, but you're, you're right. It's W W A R C W A R C which is, again, another acronym in amateur radio, which is World Administrative Radio Conference, which is basically um, bands which are uh, set aside for amateur radio use and only amateur radio use, right? So uh, there's these, there, there's a couple of them and, and uh, this is the first one. So 30 metres. In the US, you've got 10.1 to 10.150. So you've got 50 kilohertz. Of spectrum there and you can the other thing only is, is operate. that you can't contest on these guys no yes that's sorry that's another a rule so you can't contest on them and you can only operate so red is ritty and and data we though look at that we have an ssb segment right there in the middle ah. so we've got a we've got a 15 kilohertz ssb segment that we can actually do ssb on so i can't talk to you no, you could talk to me, but I couldn't reply. Yeah, nice. Exactly. So, and this is so we're ten point one to ten one fifty. So you have ten point one to ten one fifty. Yep. So they're allocated the same worldwide, I believe. I think the power levels will change depending on where you are. Hey, um, my uncle's so here. Your uncle's here. Uncle yeah, DK five O N V. Oh, oh Gunter. Hello, Gunter. Right. Um. 30 meters, the thing that makes it interesting is is that it combines that uh, DX of nighttime with also the DX of daytime. It's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty awesome band when it um, opens up. Sometimes it can be open up all the time, 30 meters. And if you listen on dead on 10 megahertz, the, you have WWV, which is, yes. the, uh, which is the, the transmission with the clock, the clock lady, which tells you the time every minute. Um, so you can get FT8 can, running. You can, yeah, and uh, and you can you can tell how good the band's going. So uh, twenty meters, twenty meters is the next band up. Uh, probably the most popular band DX wise, would you say? Of all of twenty the meters, HS yeah, bands? yeah, that's the one that I I have a strong feeling that is a good DX band. I don't have any real proof that it is mm. or isn't as good as any other band, but. That's what that's what I was taught as a young ham, and so I go with that. As we start to go higher in frequency in the HF bands, DX opportunities start to open up, but only at certain times. For instance, right now, as we're starting to go up in the solar cycle, the higher HF bands start to um, become easier to work DX around the world. When it's low uh, solar cycle, 
then these higher bands, they don't work as well or at all sometimes. 20 metres, however, is the exception, as we said, because it can um, generally, at least during the daytime, you can get worldwide contacts um, regardless of the, the solar cycle. So um, that said, though, when when we get uh, when we get uh, DX rolling in on 20 metres, um, it can... You know, it's it's pretty popular, so you get quite a lot of um, a lot of people. So, um, twenty meters is also popular band. I know for if we go over here, you've got SSTV. Um, oh, and it's also the lowest band with these. Another acronym: NCDXF. <laughs> I know, have I can't remember what the acronym stands for, but I know it's the International Beacon Network. No matter how hard you try to work a beacon on CW, they will not reply. Unless it's a reverse beacon, right? Right. Um, so, so, so if you listen on this frequency, 14.1, you might hear the NCDXF beacons and they're all around the world and they all transmit at a different time. So just Google that and you can find a map which shows which one is transmitting and you'll know so which one you're So what can you do with a beacon? So a beacon, a beacon basically tells you um, that you're hearing that particular location, which then gives you an idea that the band might be open to that location. So, for instance, if right. I was to hear whatever the beacon is in Hawaii, I can't remember what the call sign is, but if I heard that and it was very strong on my radio, then I'd know, hey, I can work Hawaii, so I can start calling Hawaii on, you know, these frequencies, specifically if I was trying to, you know, work them. So um, there we go. Ben's Ben's done the uh, I think Ben's done the hard yards for me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, SSTV is popular on twenty meters, um, and then we start to get into some more um, niche stuff. Packet people still do packet, right? Uh, to oh yeah, yeah. I was listening to it earlier today. I'm I'm actually working on getting set up for it, but priorities i've got to get moved out of the house and sold first and then i've got to finish up my aprs project then i can do packet maybe brent it, we we did definitely say bacon not bacon it's uh it's 8 30 in the morning and i could do with some bacon right now bacon, <coughs> bacon. next uh walk 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 next walk band 17 waka meters waka waka band 17 meters so again no contesting um, and this is split between data and uh, SSB portions. 18, and this is very, these are very frequency specific too. So 18068. So the oh, one thing we did forget to mention too is once you get to, uh, so anything on 40 meters or below is generally lower sideband for voice. If you're running voice, you'll usually run lower sideband. The only exception is this data mode such as FT8, you'll run upper sideband on everything. Every band, you'll run upper sideband. Once you get to 30 meters and above, it's all upper sideband. So to keep, uh, the reason I mention that is because you can see the frequency, 18.068, that's the lowest frequency. But here we've got 18.168. So you want to make sure, and this is a question obviously in the test as well, that you want to be at least three kilohertz below 18168 because if you were to transmit dead on 18168, your transmission is then starting to be outside the amateur band, which you don't want, right? Right. So uh, 17 meters, 17 meters is pretty similar to 20 meters, I think. It's very much um, a, that fluctuates up and down depending on the solar cycle. Um, but 17 meters has been really, really good. And I know that 17 meters uh, has been really good on digital modes on FT8, especially lately. A um, little bit of voice contacts as well. I heard actually quite a lot of voice um, around, what's the what's the calling frequency? Is there a calling frequency? No. On 17 meters? Um, yeah, I don't think so. Not that I know of. It, people use it all the time. Yeah. Uh, no, I thought there might have been one, but yeah, you'll you'll usually hear, you'll hear someone on seventeen meters. Similarly, fifteen meters. So fifteen meters is the next band up. That uh, is that's a that's a massive band, right? Four hundred and fifty kilohertz of yeah, spectrum. Yeah, huge. And uh, and fifteen again, very very similar to um, to twenty, except fifteen's probably 
the, uh, the DX band when you're at the the solar cycle high. It's It works really well right now. You'll hear a lot of stations on 15 meters, um, especially in the, uh, in the data portion. But um, in the SSB portion, you'll also hear a lot of people calling. The disadvantage is because it's so wide, you, you kind of need a waterfall to find people, right? <laughs> so Lots of room, yeah. Yeah, because um, you've got so much so much stuff going on. SSTV is also, again, I think SSTV is pretty po- – is the pop- most popular SSTV um, frequency is, is on 20, um, but yep. you will see SSTV on 15 as well. Uh, 12 metres. 12 metres is, is, again, another walk, 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 waka, waka band. Uh, we're going to get the name change to those bands, right? We're going to call them the Waka yeah, Waka, waka, waka. bands. Um, and uh, it's 12, 12 meters is, is we're starting to now get up to bands that are really affected by the solar cycle. Um, and it's, it's a mix between and it sits between 10 meters and 15 meters. It's a mix between those two bands. Um, you start to get sporadic E during spring, summer starts to, you know, bring your contacts out to a few thousand miles. And then you also get worldwide contacts in the oh, wow. solar maximum. Um, so, yeah, you, it and, and 12 meters, it, it sometimes will stay open after dark, but not, not always. It's usually pretty pretty dead um at night time but there are some exceptions of course and you're talking Uh, about another acronym muff and luff oh yeah (laughs) maximum usable frequency and lowest usable frequency you'll see those acronyms um thrown around where you will have at any point during the day a lowest usable frequency that you can use um and a maximum usable frequency and that's basically what the is that the f layer the f layer will propagate right which is the highest layer in the atmosphere uh tio's gone to sleep look he's just uh he's 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 <laughs> he's sick of all the acronyms i think um but uh but yes there are maps that you can you can view those on too Todd is correct as well. That yeah, trans TEP. Here we go again. Another acronym: transequatorial propagation. So you can you can work a lot of stuff uh, on twelve meters. Now we get to my uh, oh, probably second favorite band: ten meters. Ten meters is um, is the biggest HF band by far. And when I mean the biggest, it is really big. It is 28 megahertz all the way up to 29.7. It is huge. Uh, there is so much stuff in this band. Uh, it's Look at this. It's all crammed in. So you've got uh, the normal stuff. Then you've got satellites. Satellites are in 10 meters as well. You've got repeaters. So you can actually operate FM. I think this is the only band that you can really operate FM on, on HF, because of how wide FM is. Probably, yeah. So you've got FM repeaters, you've got FM simplex. 10 meters operates a lot like uh, during the solar cycle. Uh, it's it's It can be open worldwide and it can be open worldwide like for hours and hours and hours. And you can, you know, work, work the world on a piece of string, wet piece of string. Do you use that uh, that term? I'm not sure if you do. Uh, no, we don't use it much over here, but I have heard it in Europe. Europe. So 10 meters is real good. Um, and it also will open, be open without a doubt every summer. Every spring, every summer, it will be open around that. You've got a disco going on, by the way, at your place. I can see. I some. do, yeah. What's going on with that? <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a little light catcher ball in the window that's... Uh. It's over a little there. bit of a it's distraction over there for me. going on, but uh, it'll be open you're, every you're spring and every to be summer. Presenting Hayden, pay attention. Like I know, a good professional. I know. Uh, so yeah, 10, 10 meters is a great is a great band to get on, uh, and it's it's so it's your spring, your summer as we record this right now. So that it'll, it'll be it'll be open 
locally. It'll be open around the world because of the solar cycle at the top. Um, and and that's that's the skip band, right? The, the 10 meters is, is fantastic. So It is. I like it. It's got everything. Everything for everybody. Um, now, now we get to some cool bands and I know that these this band okay so this is my most pop, this is my favorite band and we've had a bit of chat going on in the chat about this band six meters and once you uh, operate on six meters you sort of become a bit of an addict at it 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 takes over your life you become obsessed with it um, someone said that to me in the early days when 10 meters was my favorite band that I'd never operated on six and uh and i didn't believe them and then I operated on six and it's now just my favorite band i'm trying to convince to and he look he's not convinced at all he's i'm not i'm not he's not so have you done a lot of operating on six not a bit that's the problem <laughs> once you once you do some operating on six then you'll be uh then you'll be good so the only thing I know about six is that it's not open all the time. So I guess that's what the draw is. Like when you work it, when you can work it, you have to stop everything and do it. And then you can't. It's kind of like having a motorcycle on a rainy day. It's kind of boring. I think that's, but when it's I think a that's, sunny day, it's fantastic. I think the appeal with six meters is uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, big challenge. So 10 meters is, ten, whilst it does open up, 10 meters is challenging because you get the you, you still have to wait for the band to open but you get the opportunity to be able to work anybody around the world fairly easily on 10 meters with 6 meters it's very difficult to work someone around the world it's the highest it's the highest band that you can work someone around the world on um, it's 4 megahertz wide it's got pretty much every mode you can almost run in 6 meters it's got uh, uh, except for satellites you can't operate satellites in 6 um, it's got FM, it's got SSB, it's got CW and, uh, during the peak of the solar cycle, which I don't believe we've reset, we've got to yet. I think we've still got another year, year and a half predicted before we hit the peak. So six meters should open up for worldwide, um, contacts. And technically this is a VHF band. This is the first VHF band because everything above 30 megahertz is VHF um until you get to um uh, above um 23 centimeters uh, well, until you get to three gigahertz so so six meters is addicting it's good um you can do all sorts of stuff and like he, the band plan has a whole pile of uh, we start to get into calling frequencies so you've got an ssb calling frequency you've got a packet calling frequency fm simplex frequencies um, so there's all sorts of stuff in these band plans here that, that you can, you can operate on six. Anything to add, Mr. No six meter man? I'm, I'm playing with the dial right now. I was trying to see if there's anything out there. <laughs> You're trying to get anything below 50.6. <clears throat> 60, uh, six meters like. also, six meters will also open up at any time of the day as well. Mainly it'll open up, um, during the daytime over an all day path but uh but but the, it has been known to, to open up at night sometimes two meters this is a band i know that you can talk about yeah i know very very much why about am i hearing two you echo back like you're on a you're on a radio or something oh that that's the six meter radio behind me oh is it so two meters what can you do on two? Uh, there's a lot of data stuff you can do on two. There is uh, local repeaters that you can do on two. Uh, lots of local area simplex, like chat with your buddies that are in the same town as you on two. And then we did a live stream on my channel a couple of weeks ago on what are some different things that you can do. And we came up with a ton of stuff that you can do. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to check over. Let me see if I can find a link for it while, while you vamp. Speak, speaking of which, so you are hearing people on six at the moment. You found someone. I, I found some noise. I haven't got it fully tuned in yet because you asked me to do something else. If you if is that frequency anywhere near fifty decimal one one zero one two zero? I think they're the two. This is fifty one forty seven. 
Fifty-one forty-seven. Yeah, so you're sitting in the uh, in the in around about the SSB portion. So cool. All right, you found someone on six. You're addicted. You're gonna get hooked, and you'll never come back from it. Excellent. Oh, you can also do uh, on these these bands. You can also start to do EME as well. Earth, Moon, Earth communication. Um, so Tio's posted two meters. Two meters can take an entire stream, as we already know. So Tio's shared the link. So check out his stream after this one. Don't go away. Don't go away uh, from this. Right. T Ray's T Ray's just entered the chat. I know that T Ray loves uh, he loves giving away memberships. He might not have been here earlier on when we spoke about uh, membership. Yeah, we were trying to figure out how to do it. So T Ray, if you know, tell us how. Yeah, or if uh, if anyone else in the chat knows how to uh, how to do membership giveaways, then uh, we need a demonstration. Uh, okay, this is a band that we don't have. One point two five meters, two hundred megahertz. I can't Ooh, really talk why. to this. Because we don't have it. Yeah, I can't talk to it either. But people people love it. They <laughs> they say it's really good. But I I don't have a radio that can do it, and nothing around here. Don't you? Yeah. So I know why my uh, radio is acting up. It's on split <clears throat> for some reason. Oh, okay. Lionel says uh, there's normally a button for it. I don't see it for some reason. I think that's in relation to the. Uh, the, the channel memberships, if you click on the Super Chat button, there is a button that says Membership Gifting. Got but, it. I mean, we don't really know about how that operates, so we're not sure. Uh, yeah, so 1.25 meters is similar to 2 meters, but probably, I don't know, a little bit shorter range, possibly. <laughs> so, oh, that's TC Fitz. Ah, oh, okay. We, we got confused. We got confused, so we'll have to wait. Is TC Fitz in the uh, in the chat? He might be able to show us. We're working our way up the bands. Seventy centimeters. So seventy centimeters has pretty. I I, th I think seventy centimeters has pretty much room for any mode that you would ever want to operate on because of how wide the band is. So as we mentioned before, that as you start to get higher. In HF, it sort of varies with how much bandwidth you have. When you get above into the VHF bands, you can see here six meters has got four megahertz of bandwidth. Two meters has got four megahertz of bandwidth, unless you're in the Europe, and I think you only get two megahertz. Is that correct? Um, uh, three megahertz on 1.25 meters, but 70 centimeters. Look at this 30 megahertz worth of spectrum. So that means we can start to run some wide band stuff. We can start to do fast yeah. scan television. Yeah, so you can get up to 9,600 BPS on 70 centimeters. So you can do mm. some very wide banded stuff. You, a lot of people, there's a, what they call new packet radio that runs on like literally <laughs> new packet radio, not the new packet radio. Jason's in the chat, but I think this comment wins the day. <laughs> 2.0 loves 1.25 meters probably because he can almost reach it. <laughs> I expect yeah. uh, I expect Jason to respond to that if you're still there. <laughs> so, new packet radio is what I was talking about, and basically you can do data transmission between your own computers inside of your own regional area. Mm. Fun stuff. Yep. Yeah, uh, and uh, so uh, amateur television as well. So an amateur television transmission is like. Seven megahertz wide. This is fast scan television. This is real TV. It's seven megahertz wide. So you're starting to use quite a bit of real estate in the spectrum. So you can see here towards the bottom end of the band, we we have a we have some more restrictions on seventy centimeters here in VK. Once I scroll down to them, we lost a bit of spectrum. So we're now four thirty to four fifty. We used to go down to 420, but we're 430 to 450, so we have 20 megahertz, uh, whereas you have um, you still have that full 30 megahertz available. So, and I think and ICOM's again, the one that supports uh, <clears throat> fast scan TV the most. The new 905 will do it, and I think the old ICOM 7000 will do it. Yep, Off the top and of you my can head. do so. The so the 905 will do um, analog television, but you can also transmit digital television as well. So when I was talking about the bandwidths as well. Um, seven megahertz was in relation to digital digital amateur television, and that's one thing that our club does. We transmit amateur television every uh, every uh, Wednesday night. 
and anyone in the city can pick it up and watch if they would like to. Um, so uh, CW, digital, if anything is in 70 centimetres basically. Uh, moving up, 33 centimetres, another band that we don't have, 900 megs. This is a another niche band with a couple of repeaters and some simplex and some other bits and pieces. But you've got uh, a lot more room in here for... Uh, for some of those wider bandwidths. Oh, and satellites. We forgot to mention about satellites too. They're, uh, they're also in 70 centimetres too. Uh, 23 centimetres. This is another band that I like. We've got, we've got 26 or 27, 23 centimetre operators in our, uh, in, our, in our little city. And this is 60 megahertz wide. So 23 centimetres is a massive band. It's huge. Um, you can do all the stuff that we said about 70 centimetres, but you have a lot more room to do it. So, And propagation on these bands, uh, as you start to get up, gradually gets shorter and shorter because you're starting to get up towards the microwave bands now. But 23 centimetres is actually a pretty it's a pretty cool band. Um, you, I don't think you've operated on it before, have you, Tio? No, not <laughs> at all. Uh, the seven o this this nine o five and the ninety seven hundred are both radios that operate on twenty three. But Yasu used to do little mobile radios that you could get, which operated on twenty three centimeters um, FM only. And uh, yeah, you can build small Yagi's that are only three three to six three to six feet long, um, small little elements. And they're very directional and you can have quite long distance contacts. So we here, we bounce our 23 centimetre signals off of a, a mountain and everyone points at that common point on the mountain and they can all talk to each other even though they can't see each other line of sight. So I think that's pretty, pretty well. Neat. Yeah, it works pretty well. Is that the band that you've got the distance record on? Yes. So I've got a national distance record to from Australia to New Zealand on 23 centimetres. These bands are also uh, affected, so pretty much two metres and above, six metres a little bit, but not as much. Two metres and above are all um, affected by tropospheric ducting during the summer mainly or during very uh, um, places like Florida would have it pretty much all the time. But um, tropospheric ducting um, allows your signal to get trapped into a, into a duct of hot air and cold air and your signal can transmit lots and lots and lots of distances so uh, lots and lots and lots of distances far distance yes say lots and lots of distances Many all forests, the distances yes. all the distances all and then uh you start to get to super high frequency stuff so um this is there's 23 centimeters and then you get I'm I've also, I'm also on 13 centimeters, so this is microwave now. Um, the first SHF band, <clears throat> because sorry, no, that's wrong. This is still a UHF band. UHF is technically 300 to three gigahertz, so um, 13 centimeters, 2.4 gigahertz. This can be pretty noisy because of Wi-Fi and other everything else, Bluetooth, everything else that operates on this band. But you can do some do some cool stuff on that. Um, I've done microwave videos before, and then three gigahertz, three point four gigahertz. You guys, I think, have lost that now, but we've still got it. Nine centimeters, five centimeters, five point six gigahertz, ten gigahertz, and then you start to get it to the really really high frequencies. So ten point five, and your antenna is this big. Yep. Yep. Well, see, that's the other thing. We've also got, I'm not sure, I don't think, not sure if you've got this band. Someone in the chat might know. But if we keep scrolling down, this, this is the highest amateur radio band that we have access to here is, uh, where is it? So 200, 200 and... 50 gigahertz i'm trying to find the terahertz man there is light you can Ooh. because because light is not light is not licensed <laughs> because it's hard to license light 
we have transmitted on 474 terahertz before using LEDs and modulated a wow. signal over it. Oh, that's pretty so cool. So we used, we used a thing called a cloud burner. I'll see if I can find it. Literally. Um, so while you're looking for that, T-Ray saying, why are all my Australian contacts all near the coast? Are there no hams in the middle of Australia? No. Not really. None. Not really. Uh, so I'm no. hearing Texas from Wisconsin on six meters right now. That's not bad. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good distance. Um, I'm trying to find photos, but I can't find. Oh yeah, here we go. So this is the little. This is a little portable unit. And obviously, so you this sent is all... voice or, or CW <laughs> over it. Photo. Yeah, I think uh, I think both. I think I think it was a voice. So there you go. There's the there's the red light illuminated. And you can see they're tra sending it across across town, listening into the speaker. Oh, SSTV. It sounds like that's what's written in the caption. There is a photo here of the cloud burner. All right. I don't know where the cloud burner is. It's somewhere. But uh, but yeah, this was a this was a, a quite a few years ago now. So, um. so I think we should do that, Hayden. I think we should light up every grid square in Central Australia. Light up every grid square. That's a lot of yeah. grid squares. Yeah. Well, I mean, what else are we going to do? Well, is it the QRZ mapper? Does that show where everyone is? Yeah, it does. Uh, it won't show me. No, it won't let me. I'm trying to show how many hams actually live in the middle of Australia. There's only 13,800 hams in Australia, so that kind of gives you an indication. Nearly 99% of them live on the coast, the east coast. Well, not 99%. The other 1% live in Tasmania. No, that's that's I, I've misspoke there. Uh Probably about 80, 80, 70 or eighty percent live in the east, eastern coasts. Uh, most of them. There's a couple of others that live in Perth and also in Adelaide as well. So, and uh, and yes, and Alice Springs too. So, uh, so that's basically a summary of every single band. Hopefully, that was something helpful to you. I noticed that we didn't have anyone help us uh, understand how super chats work or uh, how. Uh, membership <laughs> works which is a bit we might have to wait until next time to figure out how that actually works so i feel like you're hinting at something <laughs> um ben's talking about percentages of hams yes we do we have 0.1 percent of the population of of our island are hams so there you go we're almost double that of most other areas in australia so we must be doing something right here i guess yes um <clears throat> thank Nobody you. Else to talk uh, to. The, thank you very much to Forty Five Auto, and thank you to Icom for producing this lovely, colourful band plan. Again, this uh, segment was not sponsored by Icom, but if you'd like to, I'm hinting again, aren't I? <laughs> if, you'd <laughs> Icom, like to, yeah. uh, if you'd like to reach out, or or Yesu, if you'd like to make a band plan like this, then by all means, do so, and or we if, can. We or can if Yesu, if you have another poster that we can talk about for an hour, we'd be happy to talk about your poster too. <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. We'll be happy to talk about any of these things as long as we're conveniently uh, conveniently asked to. So, <laughs> Yeah, Dan's asking, are there any ham radio manufacturers <clears throat> currently building in Australia? Uh, I think that they're ma mainly all imported except for some small uh, um, kits. So like uh, I think there's, there's some QRP kits that you can get from here. There's also, um, I'm trying to think offhand, there's one. That I can that's in VK3, but I can't remember. It's a QRP kit that they make. Mini kits also do a lot of microwave stuff as well, so they do some stuff. So, yeah, we kind of um, we kind of we do have some. Um, there is a uh, oh yeah Barrett, good, thank you Ollie. That's it. Um, they're HF Outback radios. Old fart on a BMX. There's a Yasu world map. 
But we can't talk about it because we don't have one. So there you go. Um, thanks, guys. I hope that this was helpful. If you've got a future suggestion for uh, for a stream, then let us know, and we'll see you in the next one. And we'll just we're just going to play this because we haven't had the opportunity to. So.